So there we go, we have the, the wheels done like that, sort of nicely weathered. Now they're gonna need a little bit of dry brushing, for which we're gonna do, they've totally dried now, as have the tracks, they're all done and totally finished as well. So if we just pop those out of the way for just a moment. Okay, so what we're gonna do, um, there's two ways to basically do this. We could just lighten up some of this, um, the sand yellow we're using, this 028, and dry brush with that. But the other color that they do do is 075, which is sand, and this is sort of the pairing color, really. Um, and when you look at them, obviously, this one here is a lot lighter. So what I thought I'd do is try and do a little bit of dry brushing just around this spoke area to start with. So what we're gonna do, just pop a little bit on the top up here. It's quite a nice light bleached sand type of color. And then what we do, we're gonna take our slightly, uh, our small flat brush just here, okay, which is the number two size flat brush. Lots on the, the brush. Okay, then we're just gonna give it a rub, get it all off, and then we're gonna load it up again. Now the reason we do it twice is to make sure that all the bristles are soft and that there's not any hard area still on there. Okay, so then once we've got it, we're just gonna, in turn, just gonna dry brush everywhere around the inside. And what we're trying to do, as you can see in there, if I bring you in, so we end up with something like this. So as you can see, we've got this one here, which I've just dry brushed, and it sort of gives that greasy, dusty sort of bit going on around. So if I just load up again, and knock all that paint basically off, and then we're gonna come in here with the second one, right here, and just do circle motions, a little bit over the top, but basically just run it around. And we're just trying to get that, you know, the feel of obviously the dirt's been traveling around and the dust is round and it sort of, it all just gets it all sort of moving and going around. So we end up with something like that. So we're gonna do that to all the wheels absolutely everywhere. And as soon as we've got all those done and dusted, we basically can then carry on. So then we're gonna get it all fitted to the lower hull, all the wheels in there. And then as soon as we've got all that done, we can get the tracks on. Once the tracks are on, we can get these okay, side so that's all the road wheels done. What we're gonna do now, just add a little bit more of the yellow, of that sand yellow, and we're just gonna take a touch of white to that. So we're probably gonna mix it about sort of um, two parts yellow to one part white, like that. We're gonna take big flat soft brush, this is number 10, it's a big, quite a stiff one as well. So we're just gonna mix this up to make a very light color on the top like that. We scrape along the sides. Okay, we want it basically all off of this brush now just a tiny bit because what we're going to do is weather up the actual um, areas around it. Now if I bring you in for this, um, as you can see, or I hope you can see there, um, obviously we've got the centers done but what we're going to try and do now is just lighten up around the outsides as well. So we give that rubber a look like it's being, sorry, uh, like it's being sort of worn the dust on the outside. Obviously we want this centre bits here to look rubbery because they're touching, but the hubs aren't. So we're just gonna do that both sides, just like so, just to really dust them up. So if we just do the outside ones for the minute, I'll just bring you out a bit. So all we're going to do, dusting them round, just so it looks like it's got, you know, you get that wet dust look sort of going on, but also it'll just lighten up all the hubs and give it the appearance of running on track. So okay, that's the wheels done. So whilst we've got it all on the go here, we're just gonna take a little bit up on the brush, knock most of it out, leaving a little bit on there, shall we say. Um, and then what we're gonna do is just give it a rub round this entire area underneath. And that way we'll get a little bit of tonal difference going on and we're just gonna rub it all around, all this business under here, to give it that sort of sandy look. And a little bit of scuffing, perhaps, and bits and pieces of wear on all of these. So if I bring you in, you can have a look. So there we go, we sort of get that scuffing 
look going on. So if I just do the other side, move those out of the way a moment. Um, there we go. So obviously we're just coming in and give it a bit of a, a rubbing everywhere underneath. The same thing. We're just trying to break it all up a bit, and obviously it's going to get the wash soon as well. So we just need it to get it that sort of dusty sand bleaching, sand warm. All those try the looks going on in there. So there we go, that's that done. So now we can basically come along and put our road wheels on. Now these are just gonna push fit on their nice rubber grommets. All the way along. Obviously you want the ones without the little nodule on the inside. And as soon as I come across one, you'll we'll see it. Okay, that's that side done. And then same on the other side. All those wheels can go on. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the tracks on this side. Now, pretty all straightforward. What we've done, we've actually washed out the wheels and the bits and pieces on this side. So if I show you what we did on here, I took some of the light wash, give it a bit of a shake, and then using a soft brush, and it does make a bit of a difference because it just helps work it all in. Okay, each of the road wheels and this back sprocket just got a little douse and just make it work it into the grooves as if you would um, actually working on an aircraft. So just give it a rub around. Don't worry about the bubbles because they will go. And in some ways it's quite nice because the bubbles help work it in everywhere. So if you wanted to, you can just use the bubbles. And if you find you've got a little bit too much, just scoop out some, like so. Remember, if you ever have your wash, especially doing work like this, and it, it pulls and doesn't seem to get in there, so to speak, um, just add a tiny bit of your dishwater soap, literally half a drop into a bottle full like this, and it will cure um, your problem. So there we go, that sits in there like that. And basically, um, in about 30 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on how warm you are, where you are, um, it should dry and give you that type of look um, on the wheels, which is quite nice. As you can see there, it just gives it that dusty look where you've got dust sitting on there. And obviously we're gonna go around and do other things, but for the moment it just does that bit. Um, the tracks and everything will get on as soon as that's dry. The thing is, if you can keep it upright like that, it will help with the pooling just to keep it sort of, you know, um, on, the, on the level and it stops it all sort of sinking to the bottoms. Okay, so this is basically dry now. It's just a little bit wet on one or two, which have got a little bit too much in there, but we'll, I'll show you how to get sort of make those all tonal in together anyway. So what we're gonna do next thing is getting tracks on. Now, People, I've seen people fight with these, trying to get these types of things on, but honestly, it really isn't that hard. What are you gonna do? Place it up on its side. I, on this particular one, if I remove the actual drive sprocket thing here, take that completely off for the moment, leave it to one side. Um, trying to, the best way of showing you really. If I just bring you in a little bit, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> what I've done, You've actually got little pins, little rubber pins on one of your ends here. I've just cut them off, just trimmed them off with a knife. Purely because getting them to go through and then to sort of all stick in and marry up is somewhat of a bit of a nightmare to get it to happen. So basically what I've did, we're just gonna feed it in through the front, okay? And we're gonna let it run down. Now obviously, if you're working on a different tank, make sure you've got your you tread the right way around because some of them have actual ways that they go. Seems odd, but this one, they're just square blocks, but some of them actually have directional sort of tread. So you need to make sure you've got it left and right and all the way around. Okay, so we've got it in, we're in like this. And then at this point, we're just gonna pop in, just push it slightly up out of the way like that, but we're gonna get this rear drive wheel in and then it will turn as we pull it round. Now what you want to do is pick an area where you want it to go. So in this case, what we'll do, we just flip it over now, okay? And then we're gonna use this area right here. So then all we'll do, I'm gonna use super glue, you could use a PVA, you preferably something that's got a good a bit of bite because obviously these tracks being rubber, um, they will move. So you don't want tons of it, 
just a little amount give it a bit of a, a rub round also by giving it a rub round the bit where you've sprayed over it will go through so it will stop it pulling the paint off okay then literally you just pull up I'll do this back to the front god help me right okay so we're just going to pull this up and over and join on now where we've got the join there just take your clamps on the front block and we hold together then if you get something where to hold your clamp steady just like that if we bring you in a little bit more I'm hoping you can see that but because we've got it over the back part here down the back of the wheel it's pulling it all in and pushing it all together and then the clamp on the front part will just hopefully hold it all together and that way you won't see a join because obviously it's on this bit here so you just leave it like that for a few moments so okay that's on there now so if we carefully undo that it probably will need a little bit more just to go off um, if we bring you out a little bit and there we go that's our tracks on just like that now if you're going to have something where it's showing it's worth putting a little bit of super glue or something on the top of these top little road wheels up here these little wheels and then you can glue it down to it and it gives it that effect of being sort of pulled on so we just need to sort out this drive sprocket here just to make it all line up and look nice then what you can do as this super glue is still soft if you wanted to you should be able to just run it round um, and put it up to the top half so you'll never see the join anyway which is quite a, a nice little way of doing it so we'll do that now so there we go we've got that join now is round here at the top and then the one on the bottom um, I've got to try and find it it was actually it went on a lot easier on the first time but that's that one in so then what we can do is you've got these little bits where we've gone a little bit over with the wash in certain little places um, so what we do is we just take a bit of a moist cotton bud as we do all the others we'll see we have to hold it in position here and we're just going to give it a rub to take that wash off of the road wheel because it's gone on a little bit too much around it And there we go just like that so that takes care of those and that's it tracks on so as you see we've got the plate on there and we've just added this part here which we're going to blow in as a separate but we can do that as i say because we need this skirt basically very very straightforward it's a good good fit we just fit this one on here and you just hold it in position put a drop of your extra thin and let it do its business if you pop it in your front halves okay and we're just going to work our way along and we're just going to pick out these actual hinges and use them as little glue points as we go around so okay this has been dry now so about 20 minutes and say I've just popped it together to have a look. Um, personally, I think it's looking coming on pretty spectacular. Um, with the pre-shading, with the way we thinned down the paint and we did it, all things like that, it's actually looking very, very weathered, very, very nice. Certainly the bottom of the hull um, parts here, obviously where we pre-shaded those grills and that, it gives it that nice sort of shaded effect. So what we need to do now is blow in little areas which we've missed and couldn't do at the time it won't affect anything just keep your your pressure low but at the same time you can do lots of other bits and pieces that we haven't covered already um, things like obviously we've got to put the blast screen on um, this front range finder here the, the gunner's view there um, things like um, stowage that it's going to carry you can spray all them up with your sand colors um, at this moment so what we're going to do is spray up all those little bits um, just to touch in if you like um, and then we're going to come back and give it a satin coat all over get the decals onto it get it all decaled and then once we've decaled up in the choice of markings you'd like then we can get right on with the okay so we've got the decals on now um, there's just a couple all around it so what we need to do is sort of get the surface all ready now for weathering now for this i'm going to use the um, extra acrylics flat varnish now give it a damn good shake just like that and then let it stand just for literally a minute or two 
Now the reason for this, we're going to give this a dead flat finish over certain areas because we want the anti-slip type of surface not to look at all glossy. So we need it to bed down really, really heavy. And then when we do the weathering, obviously we need it to grit in and look dirty and look like, you know, really it's been walked on. So what we need is the large lumps that you're bound to get in this stuff to sink slightly. So when we take it over to the color cup and we can pour it in neat with no thinners. So what we do, we just unscrew the top. Okay, and very, very slowly pour a little bit in. And if you see a lump fall in there, um, have a fish round and see if you can get it out. So if you get your cocktail stick or whatever you're gonna stir with, just give it a little mix around. And that way, if there is any lumpy or gluey type bits in there, you can get rid of them. Okay, next we're gonna to have to have the compressor on full whack. <clears throat> so just turn your compressor up as far as it'll go, which in my case runs at about sort of 40, um, 45. Got the two mil needle set in here. So all we're gonna do is blow through Okay, and out it comes. Now if we lift the lid off, obviously we've got shiny panels on the front here to take care of. We've got the shiny bits from all the decals really everywhere. So the first thing they're gonna do is get a dust around to kill them in. Um, what I'll do is, yeah, I'll do this one here. Just on there. And remember, keep it nice and dusty. So it basically goes on and just covers it. And if you shine it against the light, you'll see where you've killed it off and where you can't. Now what I'll try and do is I'll try and show you guys if I can get the camera in nice and tight. Okay, and we can get a decal to sort of show up in the light, get it to reflect a little, he says. And he, I don't know how well you're gonna get this on the camera. Um, let me just pull you out a little bit because I really want this to work. Okay, there we go. So you see that decal is now really, really shiny. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in and we've just blown it over like that and obviously you still see the wetness and we're just going to cut to air and dry it back off. And then hopefully there you can see we've lost all that shininess off the decal. See, we're going to get a little bit hanging around, but there's no actual way you can see the silvering or the silver, the shiny side of the decal. So if we have another go on the other side. There we go. That's a nice one. Okay, so there you go. You can see the decal there. So if we come along, light, light blow all over, and there you go, it's gone probably just a tiny bit there. Cut to where, let's just dry that back. And there we go. No more shiny decal standing out. And obviously the same thing is, because it's gonna be rough, it'll be rough to touch. Um, and that way that we can actually, in front here, um, because it'll be rough to touch, that all the weathering will be the same and we'll all meet up. Now, as we've got this dry coat on here, we're gonna have a quick blast around with all the tracks, just to get them sort of grippy, unshiny. And remember, nice, want a, a light coat going on. Now, as soon as it starts to get a little bit spitty, just get your airbrush, blow it out all over your cloth, clean the needle, and then you should be good to go. Then what we're gonna do is just gonna lightly spray a nice light light coat over the entire top of the tank to really make it completely dead and give it a sort of a rough finish. Now it takes a little bit of work this because you're sort of on a knife edge between it spitting lumps and then actually you know giving little white flecks all over your model which they will rub off you can just rub them off and then obviously making it completely dead flat so we're gonna spray entire top 
and then what we're hoping by keeping your distance and spraying on nice and light it will give it a really really rough top now some people go in and they put bits on the floor and bits and pieces and things like that this is one of those things you probably won't see very easily but we're just going over and making it incredibly rough and what we'll do cut to air back to clean there we go so we'll just dry that off we just pop that over there for a moment because the air compressor is running at full pelt and it's really throwing it out and you're quite a distance and it's a very thick paint by the time it hits your actual surface of your model it's dry and because it's dry it builds up like sandpaper um, sometimes people have had trouble with washes and things getting them off um, this is really what you're is you don't want to do if you're going to be using a wash um, like on an aircraft or something nice uh, where you want a nice clean finish don't do this because what will happen is the wash will get stuck to this and never come off. But what we're going to do, we're going to be quite sort of um, frugal with the washes. We're going to go around in various areas. Now I'm hoping this is dry and I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear or even see this, but as you can see, it's completely dead flat. And also it is like sandpaper to touch. It is so rough. And let's say if you was to come along with your, um, uh, your wash, it would just get in there and then obviously because it's so rough when you go to wipe it off you're not actually wiping the clay because that's down so you're just skimming off the top part so there we go so we're going to just let that dry just for a minute and we've cured all that nice silvering if you do get any little flecks um, let them dry and then just give them a bit of a rub off really and that will take care of them check for any silvering make sure you've got no silvering going on with any of your decals um, just got this one around here still to do Okay, so the next stage we've got on here is going to be dry brush it. Usual thing, I've got a number 10 flat brush loaded up. Now the thing is, what we're going to do, we want to leave on a little bit more paint than we normally would. So if we start um, back up here, very light passes. And we're going to just gently work over the entire surface. And then we're going to do our flicky tight movements going all just back and forth for the minute and then when you can't see any more don't start pushing down like we would normally do just reload okay plenty on there and we're going to go again now the thing with not pushing down hard is obviously we don't want to rub straight through the paint so when we've been like this we've been everywhere over this direction then we're going to go the other way we'll reload up again and then we're going to go back and forth the other way and what we're trying to do is just this will just give it that sort of dusty look on top that armor gets and then hopefully you'll see by doing the front and back we've done it now because obviously the entire thing's got that dead flat finish we were talking about on the top. Your dry brushing is going to stick to that as well. And it's all these things which will hopefully give us a little bit of tonal change that you'll see and pick up quite nicely. Now what you don't want to do is put any brush marks. So get most of it off before you start this flicking around business. Okay, now I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera like this, but you see this back half here, we're all done and it's got that sort of dusty look. Now this front edge, I haven't been anywhere near, so you might see a slight difference in colour. This is a lighter colour to the front and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get this sort of dusty look as I say, so I'm hoping it's picked out. Obviously with the stills photos, you'll pick it out a lot better because on here as you can see you get a sort of a dusty way of doing it so all we're going to do now is load up and go around absolutely everywhere with it okay so now we've been everywhere right the way around the tank and we've completely um, dry brushed the entire thing so i don't know how well it's going to stand out with the camera but it looks very very dusty very very light so now what we've got to do really 
It's just finished off now with a little bit of weathering and then we're going to pop round it with a tiny, just a little bit of post shading, which is always the fun part. So if we just clean our brush off here. Okay, we're going to be using the light wash. Let me hook the top off here. And obviously we're just looking for areas where we can sort of add a little bit of depth, if you like, um, to the model. So what we're going to do, paper cup here. Gonna put a bit of wash in the bottom. Okay, and we're just gonna pick out little areas that are perhaps gonna see quite a bit of wash. And what we want to do is brush it around. We don't want it pooling too thick because quite frankly we don't want to put um, too much everywhere but certainly big flat areas we'll get it just a little bit round the back okay and we're gonna let these areas all dry okay so we're all dry now um, basically usual thing let's get some kitchen roll um, cut it up into squares and we're going to do roughly the same thing as we did before now obviously we are very rough as we know so what we're going to do is just lightly give it a rub without moistening in it all over and just see how it is now the reason for doing this is obviously depending on how good and smooth your paintwork is it depends on how it's going to come off so it's best to go with nothing to start with and okay we're pretty well welded on there so we're going to moisten it up, take a little bit off, rub it on the back of your hand, the tissue. Okay, and we're going to work our way just down this side skirt for a moment. And when you get little tough areas, just moisten up just a little bit more. You know, perhaps you've got blotches and things occurring and things that don't look right. Okay, and just take them off. and then give it a rub to sort of get it all back in. And then hopefully, as you can see, you've, we've got this dusty look going on now um, of armor. And then obviously we're just gonna go just down the sides and areas. And work our way around everywhere, just as we would, as if we were doing an aircraft. But obviously you don't wanna take it all off. We're trying to leave a little bit behind but that's why we've done it over a flat coat now if your flat coat is really really rough you're going to need quite a bit of moisture to get this moving um, but that said we're progressing quite nicely on this one by just using very very little moisture but we're getting that real nice dusty look um, as I was saying is down here um, compare it to the other side here we are we're down here and we've got it going on at the front there so just by moistening and giving it a rub and as you can hear this area where we did the the, the dead dead flat coat to give us that real look of you know being a working surface is taking quite a lot to get it off so what we're trying to do is not get it all off we're just trying to take off any sort of spotty areas and bits and pieces going on like that so we're giving it that type of dead flat look so I'm going to carry on and get it all off from everywhere 